Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our Large Adrenal Mass Lecture, Pearls and Pitfalls. And this is part two. We discussed adenomas previously. Uh, we discussed adrenal cysts. Now let's look at metastasis. And we know that meds to the adrenal are not uncommon. Essentially, every malignancy can go to the adrenal. But things that are particularly common and give large metastasis, and often bilateral or hepatomas or melanoma, Renal cell, the Mets are often very vascular, which tells them apart. Lung and breast are two other common entities, though usually those lesions are going to be relatively hypovascular. Now, the fact is, for many of the metastases to the adrenal gland, you really can't tell the primary unless I showed you what the, the rest of the image is and you found the primary. So, Certain lesions can be bilateral, and I mentioned hepatoma and melanoma as two of them, but they're not the only ones. Here's a patient with metastatic colon cancer. You can see meds to the region of the pancreas and large bilateral adrenal masses. We don't typically think about colon cancer as metastatic to adrenals, but they do. These were particularly large and impressive. You can see the tumors are necrotic. There's some vascularity, but the major feature, I would say, is necrosis on the uh, volume-rendered images. Another patient, bilateral adrenal lesions. Okay. Now, if you're doing a differential diagnosis here, they don't look like adenomas. I guess theoretically on non-contrast, they could be pheos 10% of the time. Uh, we could think about lymphoma. Lymphomas can be bilateral, but usually they maintain the adrenal shape. These are kind of rounder or more oval. And again, adenomas, it could be a typical adenomas perhaps. But when you give IV contrast, you can see the vascularity of the lesions, areas of necrosis. Renal cell is typically very vascular, as you can see in this case. This patient previously had a partial nephrectomy, and their only site of recurrence was to the adrenal gland, but very vascular, and in this case, centrally necrotic. You can see as you go from arterial to venous, the lesions wash out. The essential necrosis is still there, but the masses are solid. Another case, here bilateral masses, though asymmetric with the left one being particularly large. When you give contrast, you can see the lesions really don't enhance to any great degree. I mentioned before there are a number of things. Almost anything can be bilateral, but when I see really large masses, I'm always thinking melanoma and hepatoma. If you have hepatoma, the liver would typically be cirrhotic and you would see a liver mass, bilateral masses. Now, in the differential, you still could consider lymphoma. There's no doubt about it, but the history was melanoma, so it made it nice and easy. Classic appearance of how on the left side, it pushes down on the renal artery and on the kidney proper. And you could see as the lesion washes out, it's less homogeneous. So many times with adrenal lesions, as you go from non-contrast to arterial to venous to delayed, it's the venous to delayed which really gives you the inhomogeneous appearance. Another patient, here you see cirrhotic liver. If I looked at all of the images, you would have seen a hepatoma. And again, large bilateral adrenal masses, metastatic hepatoma. A patient with weight loss, large mass in the patient's left adrenal. Now, if you said this is a primary adrenal carcinoma, I would agree with you. That's the first thing I'm thinking of when I see this case. I'm not thinking about adenomas. I'm not thinking about pheochromocytomas. Large mass, model attenuation, irregular borders. Looks like to me it's involving the patient's cruise of the diaphragm on the left. It's invasive. I'm thinking all the way primary lymphoma. Here it is in coronal view. You also see in the coronal there's disease in the chest, there's subcarinal and probably right hilar adenopathy. But a big solid mass. Here's just a few more views showing you it with volume rendering from the arterial phase. Here's a really nice example showing you the cinematic with the central tumor necrosis. And at the end of the day, this was small cell lung cancer. As I showed you the nodes, right? Here it is on the PET. Very large nodes in the subcarinal region. And you could see the increased uptake in the left adrenal gland. So again, this is a good example where metastasis 
unilateral can be very large. And just by reading the images alone, unless you looked at the chest, you could not tell that this wasn't a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. In theory, this could have been a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma with METs to nodes, but usually primary adrenal cortical carcinoma metastasizes to the lung parenchyma. It can go to nodes also, but the nodes typically aren't bulky. And when they are, the patient has widespread lung metastasis as well. Another example, lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, metastatic to the left adrenal gland, large solid mass, very nicely seen abutting the aorta. Here it is again on the coronal perspective. And here's another example of bilateral lesions. Again, right and left, the left is larger. And it's typical for one to be larger than the other. Nothing very tricky. I mentioned before that particularly with hypovascular lesions, picking a primary is difficult. Here's a patient with a large adrenal mass. There's some nodes nearby, and we went through a whole differential diagnosis, primary cancer, metastatic disease. It looks ominous because it's solid, and you see the adenopathy, and you can go through a number of possibilities what you think this might be. And this was kind of unusual. This ended up being metastatic prostate to the adrenal gland. Now, I have to admit, we don't see metastatic prostate to the adrenal very frequently, and the patient had some adenopathy, but not bulky. So it indeed is somewhat um, of a challenge. Now, when I put this talk together, I put METS and carcinoma, primary adrenal carcinoma, next to each other for good reason. METS are more common but METs can look like primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. So the challenge always is with adrenal cortical carcinoma because it's not a very common tumor. It's more common in younger women. Half the patients are gonna have symptoms like Cushing's, others present with pain. The thing about it, it's typically large tumors, range three to 20 centimeters. The smaller ones are functioning or hyperfunctioning. The larger ones are not. It's usually unilateral can be vascular or can be necrotic. When large, it's more classic and then usually not syndrome related. As I mentioned, the smaller tumors are likely to have syndromes like Cushing's being the most common. I showed you a few cases including adenomas, which almost look like carcinomas, and I showed you metastasis, which looks like primary carcinoma, but there are many mimics from pheos to adenomas to metastasis to lymphoma to ganglion neuroma and ganglion neuroblastoma, to hemorrhage, to adrenal hemangioma. So it's not always going to be the easiest of diagnosis, particularly when there are no other findings. But here's a good example, patient with back pain. It's a large left adrenal mass. And I have to admit, when you see something in the 10 centimeter range, you're thinking about primary tumor. With contrast, it's some enhancement, but it's relatively hypovascular. Enhances very similar to the liver. There's some more edge enhancement. You can see the classic appearance, displacement of the left renal artery and the kidney. A really solid looking mass. To me, you're stuck in this case. This is primary adrenal cortical carcinoma until proven otherwise. Now, one thing to say, do not biopsy this lesion. Our endocrinologists, our surgeons, Jason Prescott, who leads our adrenal surgery, will say the only time you biopsy adrenal gland is if a patient has, like, say, lung cancer and you think it's an adrenal met and you, you need that for a certain protocol, then you could biopsy. But if you think it's a primary cortical carcinoma of the adrenal, if you biopsy it, then you're going to see the tumor. The only way to prevent spread is to go in, hope the capsule is preserved, and remove the entire tumor and dissect the nodes. Once there's nodal involvement, survival is under a year. There's some new chemotherapy, but nothing is really great. If you biopsy a lesion, you are going to see the tumor, and you have then removed the only chance that patient had. So it's very, very important not to biopsy. Here very nicely shows you the cinematic rendering of that mass. And again, the sagittal view, the sagittal 3D shows the mass pushing on the stomach and pushing on the left kidney. Every once in a while, you have a large left adrenal mass, which can be confused with a gist tumor. And I've seen a few gist tumors called adrenal tumors and sent to pancreas conference and vice versa. Another example, contralateral site compared to the last case. Large right adrenal mass, 
It's enhancing, but there's areas of necrosis. It's large. There's some adenopathy present. This is adrenal cortical carcinoma primary. Okay, I, I, I'm not giving a differential. Now, could it be something else? I get a strange med perhaps, but large mass like this, to me, it's like next case, okay? Here it is with the 3D, the central necrosis, some vascularity. Another example, what about this case? This is, you know, in that seven to eight centimeter range. It's solid, it's oval, looks well defined. You can imagine you're thinking about some of the benign processes. Could this be a pheo? That would be a great possibility. That a typical adenoma, I wouldn't bet on it, but it's a thought. But now you give contrast. There's some vascularity in the lesion, but not a whole lot. But when you look at the MIPS, you see the neovascularity. I think this shows it very, very nicely, the neovascularity. That's very, very important to me. And when I see that, I'm really thinking malignancy. Again, you could think still about a pheo, that we say pheos are hypervascular. Every once in a while, pheos are not. But this lesion was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. So again, while the other cases had irregular margins when they were super large, this has very sharp margins. So it does make the point that primary adrenal carcinoma can have really sharp margins. Another example, a large mass modeled enhancement. Looks very much like the case I showed you a few moments ago, but they often do look the same. Displacement of the kidney, compression of the liver, at times, people confuse this with a primary hepatic tumor when they have a little less experience, but the coronals and sagittals make it easy. Again, MIP imaging is very good for looking at vascularity. Sometimes just think that there's some vascularity present, but you really don't appreciate the irregularness of the vessels, which are shown very nicely here, which is a really good sign of primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Now, in this case, another large right tumor, central necrosis and calcification, neovascularity. Now, you can ask, could this be invading the liver? Sometimes they do. It can be challenging. Usually, it's simply compressing. The coronal view is particularly impressive for the neovascularity that's present. Central necrosis. Again, the cinematic really is good at showing you the central necrosis. Very nicely seen. Another example, incidental finding on a PE study, large mass, vascular, necrotic, areas of calcification, MIP imaging on the right shows neovascularity, prominent flow through the gonadal vein, good washout, what looks almost like a pseudocapsule, but there is irregularity, particularly inferiorly. I don't think you're going to have much difficulty in this case. It really is one of those things where it's primary adrenal cortical carcinoma till proven otherwise. Okay, here we go very nicely in this example as you look at some of the lower images and the areas of necrosis. Cinematic rendering is very interesting in looking at adrenal tumors, looking at the homogeneity of the texture mapping. We need to write an article about this, but I think it's very important to recognize the texture mapping may become very helpful in determining the primary tumor type. Now, again, this incidental findings, you know, about primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. I've read some articles, about 17% are felt to be incidental. But here again, this patient had ulcerative colitis. You can see the descending colon. And they were looking for complications of the patients you see. But you see this large left adrenal mass. Could it be a hematoma? The patients are often on different uh, therapies, but it doesn't look like a hematoma. It looks like a solid mass with areas of necrosis. Looks very similar to the other cases I showed you. This was eventually resected. It was a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Again, the volume rendering showing you the solid components, showing you some of the cystic components, and again, very nicely on the cinematic rendering. Another example, this patient presented with Cushing syndrome. So Cushing's and a large adrenal mass makes it easy. It's primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. Non-contrast, solid mass, looks like some nodes, some calcification. You give IV contrast. So from a protocol perspective, if I'm doing adrenal cortical carcinoma or a large adrenal mass, 
I'm doing multi-phase imaging. I want arterial to create a vascular map for the surgeon if they're going to operate. I want arterial and venous to show me the uh, enhancement, look at the renal vein and adrenal vein perhaps, and delayed can be helpful, though I would say delayed is probably the least helpful. The other two phases are better. Here you can see the irregularity of the mass, the central necrosis, the vascularity, very classic for a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. And again, here's some of the coronal views showing it very nicely as well. And you can see in this case, the right adrenal looks great. And as I mentioned, it's very rare to get bilateral primary tumors. It never really happens. Theoretically, a primary tumor can metastasize to the contralateral adrenal. I can't even remember a case or maybe one case I was shown in conference, but it just doesn't happen. So some things to remember, hormonal abnormalities, typically Cushing's in about half the cases. Flank pain or back pain, that's typically with the larger tumors. And again, up to 15% incidental findings. And it was only recently I've read articles and our own experience looking back about the frequency of incidental findings. We always thought it was pain or some type of hormonal abnormality, but 15% are incidental. In this article that's in press, the most common clinical presentation for functioning uh, primary adrenal cortical carcinoma is Cushing's in females. Virilization resulting from excess androgens may accompany signs of excess cortisol. A small percentage of male patients present with signs of estrogen excess, such as gynecomastia, breast tenderness, decreased libido, and testicular atrophy. So, it's a tumor that does have lots of functional uh, things. Now, some other things uh, Ahmed mentions, although the majority of uh, primary carcinomas develop sporadically, they can arise in association with several syndromes. beckwith wiedemann and Lynch syndromes are probably the ones you pay attention most to. Lynch syndrome, we see lots of patients with colon cancer, and they have multiple different malignancies. So we are learning a lot more about the genetic alterations in adrenal cortical carcinoma. So that may help us in the future find a better way of treating these patients. Adrenal cortical carcinoma is a large, 70% over 6 centimeters, an attenuation of more than 10 on non-contrast studies, uh, but low specificity, high sensitivity. But there's so many lesions that measure above 10 on non-contrast that I don't think it's very helpful, that I'm not making the call of adrenal carcinoma on a non-contrast study based on attenuation, it's typically going to be based on size to me. This idea about macroscopic fat, whenever I see it, it's usually a large tumor where you have no doubt and it's invading local structures. I don't think I have problems confusing it with a myelolipoma. Occasionally, some of the myelolipomas get so large, you can think about a liposarcoma in the retroperitoneum. But again, it's a theoretical problem, one I don't seem to think I have. So again, here's some of the summary statements. Lymphoma, when you look at all the articles, characterized by large tumors, often over 10 cm. Infiltration rather than smooth margins. The masses generally expand and infiltrate the glands. Now that's with lymphoma. So when you think about it, when you look at those first two lines about primary adrenal lymphoma, it very much is similar to um, adenocarcinoma, or primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. The thing about it is, of course, is the growth patterns. It's also going to be that primary is going to, adrenal lymphoma is going to be bilateral, where primary adrenal cortical carcinoma is not. But let's do this. Let's stop at this point. So I covered it in this talk, metastasis. I've covered primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, and I brought you to lymphoma. Again, we're going to speak about how lymphoma, I think it's typically not a problem for me to suggest lymphoma, though there is overlap at times with adrenal cortical carcinoma. So it's something to think about. And what we'll do, let's come back in a few minutes and take a look at that. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.